Hello, I'm Zando Toaster, and you're about to see Reboot for the PlayStation 1. Time is going to start when I hit New Game here in 3, 2, 1, now. So this is Reboot. It's based on the uh, cartoon on Cartoon Network that was on in the mid-90s. It's a 3D action platformer. In every level, I have three objectives. I'm going to mend tears, I'm going to collect key cards, and then I'm going to go to the vid window, which will let me exit the level. You can see in the lower left, uh, the little uh, translucent key card that shows how many cards there are in each level. In the upper left, you can see I have a primary weapon, my pistol, and a secondary weapon, the mending beam. The mend beam is the main secondary weapon I'm going to be using through the game. It's what I use to mend tears like that one. There are upgrades you can get for your primary weapon. I'm picking one up right here. I now have a level 2 pistol. It fires much more quickly. Which is good because level 1 pistol is pretty terrible. I'll mention other weapons and upgrades as I come across them. Uh, every level... Uh, there is a timer that starts at the start of the level uh, that starts counting down while you wait for the first tear to spawn. And then there will be another timer between each tear waiting for the next one to spawn. The timer isn't visible anywhere, I've just figured out what they are through uh, playing the game several times. That was an extra life I picked up. And right here is a secondary weapon, the mortar. I'm going to use that in a few levels. The extra life isn't really necessary. Also, that's the key card. I just got that. The extra lives aren't really necessary, but I have a lot of free time waiting for this final tear to spawn. Also, I didn't really mean to fall down here, but again, a lot of extra time. It does not matter at all. Uh, those are turrets, by the way, I was just shooting at. Those are the main enemy that I'm going to be fighting throughout a bunch of the game. Got caught up on a trash can there. So yeah, I've mended all three tears, I've collected the key card. Once you have done those things, the exit will open, you can jump through it. There are a lot of cutscenes between the levels that look very good. They are the quality that the show was, so, you know, very nice. Going into the second level here. I've got a bad this. First thing I'm going to do is run over and grab a new primary weapon. Once I get these turrets out of the way. This will be the blaster. The blaster is the main primary weapon I'm going to be using throughout the whole game. I still have the pistol if I want it. The advantage of the pistol is that it doesn't use ammo. Uh, the advantage of the blaster is that it's good and will actually hurt things reasonably quickly. The pistol's very bad. I, I almost never use it. There's almost never a reason to. This level is actually going to have the most dead time throughout the whole run. It's 45 seconds from the level starting before the first tear spawns and then one minute between the first and second tear, and then one minute between the second and third tear. And it's a pretty small level, so there's not a lot to do during that time. So I'm just gonna take my time taking out these enemies. Got them. Hell yeah. Yeah, generally in the first few levels, when you have a lot of free time, I like just running around, making jumps, whatever. So a little bit of explanation about the show reboot, for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, it takes place inside of a computer. The main character's name is Bob. He is a guardian whose main job is to deal with viruses, uh, things like that. Uh, in the show, there's a whole thing about uh, taking out 
uh, games that the users are playing. That was the key of the level, by the way. Uh, anyway, the show heavily deals with uh, dealing with games the users are playing. Uh, ironically, the reboot game has nothing to do with games, and is entirely about these tears and the viruses that are causing them. The main bad guy in the game, or the main bad guys, rather, are the main villains in the first season of the show, Megabyte and Hexadecimal. The game is supposed to sort of act as a prequel to the show. Uh, it takes place before anything in the show happens. Not that that means a whole lot. The show starts off pretty episodic and kind of goes off the rails after a while. There's the tear. Yeah, like I said, you have a lot of free time in this level in particular. In a couple levels, it really starts to pick up. There's hardly any waiting time anymore by then. Uh, your main mode of transportation is the hoverboard that you're using. There we go. In the show, they use these hoverboards to actually fly around. This is more of a platformer, and so flying wouldn't make a lot of sense for it, so instead you just hover a little ways off the ground in this. You've got a pretty straightforward jump you can do. And then strafing around is the best way to pick up speed. Uh, I just picked up the upgrade for the level 3 pistol. This is the final upgrade you can get for the pistol. There are other upgrade collectibles you can pick up for it, but they will not level it up anymore. It just caps at level 3. The same is true of the other weapons as well. Uh, I like using the level 3 pistol a little bit in this level, because this is just about the last level where it's going to be any use. After this, the blaster is really the only thing that I'm going to be wanting to use. Oh, there's the tear. You can also see... Uh, after a tear spawns, it takes a few seconds before it starts bouncing around like that. You can't actually start mending it until it starts bouncing around. So if you ever see me just staring at a tear, uh, that's why I can't really do anything with it. Okay, so this is the final key of the level. I'm now going to drop down here and fight that thing. I picked up the mortar in the first level for this thing. Uh, you don't have to fight that. There is an invincibility power-up you can grab to deal with the tear that spawns down here, but I find it easier to just grab the mortar in the first level and fight good old squid face. Also, if you fight him and kill it, you get to hear Bob call it squid face, which is very good. Here we go. I'm also going to go ahead and mention on this tear in particular, it's not entirely obvious, but the tears will really throw you around when you try mending them. Uh, that's where pretty much all of the difficulty of dealing with them comes from. They will try to throw you to the side, turn you around, basically anything to mess you up they can do, they will try to do. And in, especially these first few levels, pretty much all the time save you can get comes from just trying to mend them as quickly as you can. Oh, something like this should be right. Just thinking about my positioning, I might be a little far over. I like to try to stay centered here for this tear.
There it is. Ooh, that was very nice, actually. I don't know that I'm going to save time on this split, but that tear in particular was very nice. Yeah, that was very close to my gold. Okay, so we're going into level 4 now. This is Site E, and the run really starts picking up here. This is going to be the first level where a, uh, a tear is going to spawn before I get to it. First I'm going to take out that guy for later. Then I'm going to shoot on over here. Grab this key right now uh, to save a little bit of time later. And then I'm going to go over here, take out, try to take out this other guy. This guy's pretty annoying. If he's close to a wall, you can't actually hurt him. And then I'll deal with the first tear here. Anyway. If you're really fast, you can catch this platform before it goes up. You don't lose any time missing it, it just... It makes it easier to get to the next tear on time. Also, while waiting for the next tear, I'm gonna go ahead and run over here to grab the second key. Ooh, that was unfortunate. Uh, those are all bombs I was running into. They don't do very much damage, so you should be fine just plowing into them. Uh, especially because there's a health pickup coming up right over here. Hello. Tear? Oh gosh. There we go. Uh... The tears are strange in this game. In my experience playing, they seem to take a variable amount of time to mend. Uh, they will throw you around a variable amount. Like, even the same tear across multiple playthroughs will uh, throw you around different amounts. It's just very strange overall. Uh, back in that last room, I picked up the missiles. This is the third and final type of primary weapon that I'm going to have. Uh, I'm also hardly going to use them. They are very strong, but they consume a lot of ammo, and they are very inaccurate. You will often see me trying to use them, and the rockets I shoot will just plow into the ground or into walls and not hit any enemies. So even though they're very strong, I'm still mostly going to be using the blaster. Now this is a very difficult jump I'm going to go for to get to the end. That looks like I made it. Very nice. That went pretty well overall, I think. Going into level 5. This is one of my favorite levels in the game. It's a series of sort of highway roads, but because the edges of the roads are slanted, you can get pretty interesting jumps on them. Jumps that I don't want to say are unintended, because, I mean, the way the physics were set up, it seems, it seems like the devs wanted you to be trying to make these jumps, but there appear to be a lot of... I'll call them intended skips you can make in this level, as well as... Oops. As well as some that seem unintended. So real quick, I'll go ahead and explain. When you fall, it uses a third of your ammo uh, to pull yourself back up. That's the green bar next to the primary weapon. If it would consume the rest of your ammo, then it will remove a life and take you back to the next checkpoint. But that time you saw it just pulled me back up to the last place the game had registered I was standing. 
that's how it dealt with it. Uh, going up to the second tear here. The tear's actually going to spawn a little ways up ahead, but I'm going to hang out back here. You may have seen a couple of times a dialogue window appear on the right side of the screen. Uh, I was hanging back to avoid one of those windows appearing. You'll see it right here as I go back. If one of those windows is up, uh, when a tear is supposed to spawn, it will actually delay the tear spawning until the window's done. And so if you trigger that window while waiting for the tear, uh, you lose like 8 seconds on that. Uh, I picked up an upgrade for the blaster there, and now I'm going to make a jump. That jump is not intended. I'm very confident. You can just jump right on a car that goes by to get up here. It is my favorite skip in the game. It is very consistent, too. The car that I jumped on will follow that pattern forever. It's pretty easy to do once you know what you're jumping at and what to look for. But it saves a lot of time getting up to that third tear. Here you can see a few more examples of me just using the slope of the road to make some jumps. Ooh, that, ooh, ooh hoo, boy. Okay. I nearly fell off of that like three times. I will take it though. Okay. And then jump over here. That last jump I just did over to the vid window uh, saves something like 20 seconds over needing to go around a long windy path. It's very nice. Yeah, the platforming... The physics in this game make the platforming a lot of fun when it comes up. Prepare to face the mother of all ABC tanks. Meg ABC. Okay, so this is the Meg ABC. This is the first boss. I'm going to be using the rockets on this. I mostly only use rockets on boss levels. There's going to be a couple of exceptions to that, but for the most part... The boss strategies are hit it with rockets until you're out of ammo, and then just keep hitting it with bullets until you hit an ammo pickup. Uh, the bosses function differently than normal levels. Instead of three tears and key cards, uh, this boss, you beat the boss, mend the tear, and then the level just ends. You don't need to go to a vid window or anything like that, it just, it's done. Some of the future bosses, there's not even a tear, you just beat the boss and the level ends. Okay, we're coming up to the first ammo pickup. That was the health one, the ammo one is up here. Uh, the buildings around the uh, edge of the level are actually just totally insubstantial. There we go. So you can shoot rockets right through them. There we go. That is the Meg ABC. We're now going into Beverly Hills, is the name of this next area. Uh, site E is when the run started picking up. Beverly Hills is when the game actually starts getting pretty hard. This is one of the harder levels in the run, and playing as a kid, this is as far as I was ever able to get. In particular, this tear is pretty difficult. Uh, the statue holds it, and this statue can do whatever it wants. It's random every time. Sometimes it will stand still and let you mend the tear. That wasn't too bad. Other times it'll run up to you and pummel you with the tear until you die. Uh, in addition to that statue, there's also a lot of things in this level that are just going to be shooting at me. And the fastest strategy is to ignore them and hope you don't die. Grabbed an invincibility power up there to deal with the tear in this room. There we go. And then I'm going to run back over to the other room. And ideally, I'd be able to mend this tear 
before my invincibility runs out, but it's not a big deal if I don't. Most of these enemy, most of the enemies in this room will have a hard time hitting you anyway, so it's not a big deal if you don't have invincibility for that part. And then the third reason this level is so hard is there are a couple of difficult skips I'm about to go for. This one? You're supposed to go through a long path to get both that key and this next one. I'm gonna give this two more tries. This is a nice skip, but it's really hard to pull off. Hey! Second try. That's very good. If I'm going for uh, record attempts, I usually give that, like, two tries, and then I just give up and get that the intended way. But getting that skip first try saves something like 30 seconds. Anyway, then I'm gonna go grab the last key here and get a rocket upgrade. This upgrade is also... Ooh, that was very nice. That upgrade can be very difficult to grab. Just difficult to stay on the platform right there. Yeah, that was a gold split, wasn't it? If I could get first try on that, uh, that skip to the third key, that'd be even better. I've been getting more and more consistent with that lately. That's been very nice. Okay, level 8. The first thing we're gonna do is climb up this sloped area and grab a key. This is a little finicky, so I'm gonna shut up and focus for a second here. Okay, and then I'm gonna drop down and snag the level 3 blaster upgrade. So the blaster is now also fully upgraded. Again, like the pistol, there are other upgrades I could collect, but this is the cap level. It won't actually make it any stronger if I grab more. Uh, I'm also going to use the missiles on... There we go, on the enemies in this next room. Uh, I find them fairly effective here. Oh, please. Thank you. Okay. Oh, gosh. Come on. There we go. Yeah, that's one of the few places in normal levels where the missiles are actually very effective against those guys. Also gonna duck over and grab a health and ammo pickup over here. To make the next chunk of this level much easier. Uh, it's also worth mentioning with the blaster, the way it works is you can charge a shot or you can mash shots. Uh, and in my experience, if there is an enemy in front of you that you can see, you should just be spamming blaster shots as fast as you can. That is the best way to deal damage to them and kill them. Getting through these columns is a little tricky also. They will tend to push you around and turn you in directions you didn't mean to go. Okay, now I need to go back through all of this. This is a fairly long level, just because of all the back and forth I need to do. Uh, but right up here, I'm also going to be picking up another secondary weapon. That's the antivirus. And what that will do is if I hit a turret with it, the turret will start fighting for me instead of against me. And I'm going to go ahead and use that in the next level to make a small section quite a bit easier. I'm also going to grab a health pickup right there so that I don't need one immediately in this last room. 
Voltaire's gonna spawn in the room I just passed through, but the last key is over here. I'm also gonna do a little bit of a skip to get back out of here. That's not intentional. There's another path you're supposed to follow to get out of that room. That's actually supposed to be the only way out of this whole area with the tear, but you can do another skip to get out the way we came in if you jump like that. There we go. Very nice. And I'm a little low on health, but I have taken out enough of the enemies along the way that it should not be a problem. There we go, and then just need to, ah, dang. It's possible to get through all of these pillars without waiting for any of them to turn, but it's very, very difficult. I've only done it a few times. It usually takes me two or three cycles there. And I'll just come back up the way I did for the tear, and then jump over there to leave the level. This next level is another interesting one. This is, this is a fun one. I like this one. Uh, it's set up as sort of a layered pyramid where tears are immediately spawning, uh, going up layer by layer. And then after the third tear, on the top layer of this pyramid, there are little sort of platforming uh, challenges to get the four keys. Part of the reason I like this level is that I've found ways to skip each layer of the pyramid. So you can see I didn't have to go all the way around it like you're supposed to, I was able to just jump up it. And then similarly right here, if you just turn around, you can make this jump. get to the next layer. There we go. Now I'm going to use a lot of ammo to take out these turrets along the way so that they will not be as annoying. This is also why I bought the... or why I grabbed the antivirus so that I don't have to deal with the four turrets guarding the, t the keys at the top. All of this is much easier if you can just hit those once and then forget about them. Now the platforming in this level is fairly punishing. If you fall... Okay, I'm gonna just hit that now. If you fall at all, uh, you will fall down to a lower level of the pyramid and need to climb all the way back up. Even falling just one time can lose you 40 seconds if you fall all the way down. Especially if you fall before grabbing the key. You know, at least if you grab the key and you fall on the way back, you just need to go back now. But if you didn't get the key, you need to try again. Ah. Falling once is not bad here, honestly. Especially with the skips I've found, makes it fairly quickly to get back up. And just run over to the window here. There we go. That's not too bad. See, that was just like a 30 second loss. Not even, I was slow in other parts of the level. That was probably like a 25 second loss uh, falling there. Okay, this is the second boss in the game. This one gave me the most trouble to figure out, because it's not really clearly stated anywhere how you're supposed to fight it. Uh, basically, you need to hit it with blaster shots, and then once it does like a big yell, then you start hitting it with rockets. Unfortunate. 
That might have been the yell I was waiting for, actually. Uh, let me check. Yep, okay. If you try hitting it with rockets before it does that, it will shield itself and not take any damage. It took me a long time to figure that out, so... But yeah, once I figured out the proper strategy for it, it became very easy. I usually finish it within a few seconds of what I just did. Okay, we're now going into kits. This is another favorite level of mine. I really like the middle chunk of this game. I'm gonna grab some more antivirus for a couple levels from now. So the way kits works, uh, there are three paths you go down. Each one has a lower branch and an upper branch. The lower branch will lead to a tear that'll spawn. The upper branch will lead to a key. And if you're fast, like actually pretty fast, this is hard to do, it took me a lot of practice to do this ever, uh, you can get all of the keys before the tear spawn. Or rather, you can get each key before each tear spawns, I guess would be the proper way to phrase that. So that's one of them. Uh, if you fall from the upper path uh, while going for a key, you should just wait for the tear at that point. Unless you fall really early. Uh, but the, the main thing is, if you fail to get a key, you really have to wait until you've gotten all of the tears before you can go back again and try for it. So it's a fairly big loss. If you, uh, oh, oh gosh, there we go. It's a fairly big loss if you need to go back for a key, something like 40 seconds, maybe. There we go. That's two. Two out of three. Good. There's also that big jumping enemy shooting rockets at me in the middle of the level. I think the game intends you to use the antivirus on the turrets in the level to take that out. But honestly, that thing is not accurate. Mostly because it's using rockets, the worst weapon. It really does not do enough damage to you to warrant needing to take it out. Yeah, in general, if you're careful, health is never going to be an issue you are more careful than I am being right now, to be honest. I'm not too worried, though. There's a health upgrade coming up. Or a health uh, refill coming up. Right over here. There we go. If I just, instead of going for the key, turn this corner, it's right here and I'm fine. There we go. Yeah, it is fairly common in this run to die from falling off of cliffs a bunch of times. It is very, very uncommon to die from taking damage until it kills you. Something needed to go very, very wrong for you to take that much damage. Oh, that's right, I had time save here compared to my PB. Forgot about that. Ooh, that was also small gold. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to be going to the kit's boss here. This is another very straightforward hit it with rockets until it dies boss. Uh, this one is actually not on a timer, interestingly enough. Unlike the first couple of bosses. Actually, I don't think any of the other bosses are on timers after this, either. go, that's good. This boss sort of works in two phases. The first phase it has legs, I guess, and the second phase it doesn't. It's just the torso floating around shooting at you. Oh. Oh my. That was very fast. Can I get this here? 
please. Please let me get this. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on now. Come on, little tear. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. That tear is a huge pain, first of all. Um, that's actually one of the harder tears to get when it's moving around. Probably because most tears don't move around. <laughs> anyway. We're now going into Floating Point Park. This is the level I grabbed the antivirus for. This is one of the hardest platforming levels in the game. There are a lot of platform cycles I am going to try to catch. I'm going to try to play the first part of this level very quickly, likely fail, and then need to catch a bunch of slow cycles that I usually get. There are four branches, each with a key at the end. Three of the branches have a tear at the end. And all of the branches also have a turret at the end, and the turrets in this level are very strong. So, rather than try to kill them, I'm going to use the antivirus to make them, you know, very worthless against me with one shot, instead of wasting a bunch of ammo trying to destroy them. Also, this is going pretty well so far. This is the next cycle that I like to catch. Oh, very, very nice. Heck yes. Oops. Uh, the main enemy you're going to be seeing here are these golf carts. Sometimes you need to take the time to shoot at them. Sometimes it works out and doesn't really matter. Uh, those golf carts do not try to hurt you. Instead, they just uh, throw golf clubs at you, which will push you. Which sounds very silly, but no, actually, they will push you to your death. They are very, very dangerous. They're one of the more dangerous enemies in this game, actually. Ah, I was hoping to grab that invincibility, but it's not a big deal. Oh, that was unfortunate. I bumped into a tree and completely lost that jump. Uh-oh. I... Oh, that was... Yeah, that was very, very unfortunate. So that's what happens if you, uh... If you fall and you don't have enough ammo left. That's too bad. That was, I think, on pace to be my best floating point park. Yeah. Yeah. If not my best, at least close to it. At least I was able to make that skip coming back. Not great, but I made up for the mistake pretty well. Yeah, I'm starting to lose time now. This is maybe the only level left where... I have not actually done it that well in a run. I think my IL record for that level is something like 50 seconds better than my gold split. No, maybe less than that now. I got a gold recently. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is the next boss. This is the easiest boss in the game. This is the epitome of uh, hit it with rockets till it dies. There's almost no strategy here, other than that. Uh, other than actually don't shoot the rockets too fast. It's not entirely clear, but the enemies in this do have some iframes. So if you completely just mash rockets at it, a lot of the rockets are going to end up going to waste. But yeah, very, very simple boss. Okay, we're now going into G Prime. Uh, this is Megabyte's home layer, or home 
district, I guess you would call it. Hexadecimal has turned on him and is trying to destroy it now. This is probably what I would call the hardest level in the game. It has very difficult platforming. The enemies are very strong, but luckily I don't actually have to kill most of them. I fight this one so that it's out of the way, but... I mean, these are level 3 blaster shots I'm pumping into it, and you can see how long it takes to die anyway. This level actually used to be a lot harder until recently I found a couple of backup jumps that make some of the platforming easier. But in particular, uh, the last tear in this level is by far the hardest tear in the game to mend. And there's a platforming section coming back from the second tear that I would call some of the most difficult platforming I try to do. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, I was trying to get over to the third key but this is one of the ones that I found a backup skip for. Just right here, you can... If you strafe against that slope correctly, you can hop up here and grab it. Okay, so the platforming section I was talking about is going across this rafter area backwards is... Oof, basically required. Uh, dying like that is unfortunate. I don't know how long it'll be before the next tear spawns, so I might not have lost too much time there, but it was unfortunate either way. Actually, I'd like to fall right down here so I can sort of jump over here on uh, my own terms. Fun fact about this, actually, uh, if you die while waiting for a tear to spawn, you do not actually lose time. The tear timer will keep counting down after your death. Okay, anyway, so yeah, jumping across this is very hard. Oof. If I fail it, this is another backup I found recently, though it's not as consistent, and I got it first try. That was luck. That was 100% luck that I got that. Okay. Missing that jump it stinks, but it's not the end of the world. And then this is the... uh-oh. That... hmm. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I did not mean to fall like that, but... That's... okay. This is the tear that's very difficult to mend. Like I mentioned, tears will throw you around a lot, and that is a very thin piece of ground I need to balance on. Let's try this again. Nope. Oh, rats. Also, every time I walk by that lightning tower, it damages me. <laughs> and also, there is one of those very strong enemies there shooting at me. So every time I fail this, I'm also that much closer to just getting shot to death. Okay. That was the tears, though. Now, there are a couple more moderately difficult jumps, but nothing like what I've already done. It's the final key. Oh, I probably should have gone right then. This box is pretty buggy. It's supposed to be moving along this uh, walkway in a predictable pattern like the other one does. Sometimes it just starts doing its own thing. So when that happens, I try to just avoid it and then get around it like this. There we go. Level complete. That wasn't too bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. Okay. This level also has tears that spawn immediately. Timers on them are pretty big. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and go for a couple of the keys before um, getting some of the tears. It's not worth shooting at those turrets. I'm not going to be able to kill them right now, and they don't do enough damage to me to really worry me. There are going to be health refills up uh, in convenient places anyway. Like, well, right there is what I was going to say, except then I did that. Hold on. There we go. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Very good. I'm gonna go snag this invincibility before going over to the next tear. Also on the way, I'm going to pick up the level 3 rockets. And these are now the only weapon I'm going to use for the rest of the game. Uh, they are still very inaccurate. And they still chew through ammo, but every time you shoot, it is so many rockets come out that it doesn't matter. Enough rockets will hit your targets that they will kill the things you're aiming at. Also, it's not entirely clear, but this is a skip I'm going to do here. There's a longer path you're supposed to go on, but... Uh, Similar to the other skips I've been doing, if you're strafing while going up a slope, you get a much higher jump than otherwise. That's where most of the skips in this game come from. Okay, so now I'm going to take out this tear. And then I can just dive right down to the exit. And that is the only time in the game I can hit the exit before a cutscene plays to show that the exit has appeared. It's pretty nice. I like that route pretty well. Also, I didn't mean for this video to be a PB attempt, but it's worth mentioning, I lost two minutes on this level in my PB, so this... This could still be a pretty hefty record right here. This is... This level has the hardest platforming in the game that I don't do. Which I will explain right after I get this tear. So the next tear uh, is going to spawn over where that turret is that I just destroyed. And the way you're supposed to do it is to go across those little platforms in the lava, except if you touch the lava, you die very quickly. So instead, I'm going to wait for this box to come over here, and I'm going to ride this box over to the next tear. I think I lose something like 12 to 20 seconds doing it this way rather than just doing the platforming to get over there. Um, and gosh, I sure would like to do it another way, but I've tried. I have tried a lot to do the platforming down there, and it's not going to happen anytime soon. So instead I just do it this way. It's not a big time loss, and it makes this level very consistent. I'm going to jump here, and I'm going to wait. This is another invincibility power-up. I want to time it. Hold on, actually. Um, now should be fine. I want to time it so that I can ride across the lava, mend the last tear, and get to the exit before the invincibility runs out. And if I get here early before that tear spawns, then, you know, that's just wasted time with the invincibility, so. It's better to play that safe, even if you lose a little bit more time. Okay, that was the last normal level. We have two bosses left, and that's the end of the game. The first boss is Megabyte. This is another hit it with rockets till it dies boss. Uh, this boss is a little tough. It's harder than something like the floating point park boss. Uh, just because there's a lot more attacking you, and it's really easy for your health to go low without you noticing. 
if you're not cognizant of it, it's you can go from green health to red health very quickly. But that time it went well. That was very fortunate. That went very well, actually. Wow. Okay, now we're going to the final boss, Hexadecimal. Again, hit it with rockets. Uh, Hexadecimal is a little bit harder, though. First you have to take out these mirrors, or they will zap you with electricity and hurt you when you go to the center of the arena here. Hexadecimal will also sometimes rush you, zapping you with electricity, or throwing tears at you. If she throws tears at you, they can push you out of the arena, and then push you under the arena, which is made of lava, and will kill you very promptly. Although she was very nice that time. Wow. Time is when the screen fades to black right there. And that's the run, as well as a new record, by quite a bit of time. Wow. Goodness gracious. That went very well, overall. Uh, I lost a chunk of time on... Let's see, level 9 I fell trying to get that one key. Level 15 just went pretty slow in general, but that's kind of expected of it. Floating Point Park, I know I saved time on it in these splits, but I know it can still be done a lot better. Right now my estimate is... Well, my estimate for a marathon is sub one hour. I want to thank you for saving me. Um, one hour would be if basically everything that can go wrong does go wrong. You know, the keys in level 9, if I miss several of them, that'd lose a couple of minutes. Level 15, I know I lost a minute there, but that still went pretty well for me. I can very easily lose a minute or two more. Uh, level 17 went really well this time, but it's possible, I mean, like I said, my last record, I lost like two minutes there. So yeah, one hour might be a little generous. I think if I had a little bit more faith in myself, I might uh, submit with an estimate of 57 minutes, maybe. But I think one hour is probably a better idea. I never expect a marathon run to go as well as this just did, though. That was... Much better than it should have been. Uh, I think if I really kept pushing at this, or if somebody did, a 47 time could be possible. But I think just because of how long it takes for tears to spawn, unless you found some kind of major skip, or something to completely change the way the game is run, I don't think a time under 47 minutes is possible. So yeah, 50-45, that's, that's a pretty darn good time overall. I'm very happy with that. Anyway, thank you for considering Reboot for your marathon. Uh, I guess this is also a world record video now. <laughs> So, thank you for watching this new record. <laughs> Have a good day.